Next up on the M3 is the fuel filter. All right, for the fuel filter, I believe it's behind this door here on the inside right here. So this kind of swings swings on these three arms, and then we have a couple of eight millimeters to remove here, 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 and potentially one up front. Uh, there might be a nut for you here. I don't have a nut here, but I just have to pry this off, and then I pull this thing kind of uh, toward the back of the car, and then you can see this tab right here slides out and then theoretically this whole thing should just pivot down like this well, and then it falls off and then the fuel filter is this guy right here behind this panel okay so yeah so this is a metal part that was sitting behind the shield that I just took off this is the plastic part that's right above or below sorry below the transmission so I have to remove this because there are two two screws that are holding this metal box on to where the filter is so uh, here there's uh, an eight millimeter here in the back that I need to remove and then a couple of them that uh, attach here to the reinforcement plate so I took off the plastic shielding and now to get this metal bracket off that's protecting the fuel filter there are two eight millimeters that we have to remove they're right here this this guy and, and this guy these are eight millimeter they look like, kind of like clips but they are eight millimeter that you can just screw off with your ratchet and then uh, this metal bracket will fall off okay so this is what the fuel filter looks like without that black cover on so there's a 10 mil that's holding it on here, and then there are two ends, one going into it. Usually people have a little bit of trouble with it. You have to push this line over toward the filter and then press inward, or I guess to the left, on this white tab, and then it'll pull off. And then on the right side, so this is the pressure regulator, and if you ever wonder what your fuel pressure is, the way that you do it is there's the straighter valve right here. Uh, but the way that you take out this end is you hold this maybe with like a crescent wrench or something like that and then you unscrew this guy, uh, this nut. Let me show you what the, the new filter looks like so you kind of understand how to disconnect it. You can see the, the copper piece right there, the washer. Um, that's a washer we're going to have to replace, crush washer. But on the new filter this is what a new filter looks like so this end is just you know slide on filter is directional just FYI there's usually an arrow on it you see there's an arrow in terms of flow of fuel it goes toward the engine obviously and then this is what this end looks like so we're gonna have to unscrew this nut from the fuel pressure regulator and then the washer will go on, the, on this end and I'll show what the washer looks like it's actually the same washer uh, part number as the oil drain pipe from the valve cover down into the oil pan. So if you're doing a valve adjustment and a fuel filter at the same time, uh, as part of inspection two, you can get just three of those parts. One will go here, two will go on the banjo for the drain line. This guy, I don't really have any tricks. Sometimes I, well, one trick is definitely to push the line that way first before compressing this white tab. Sometimes I jam in like uh, needle nose pliers there to help me push it down. I don't have a special like removal fill, uh, removal tool, uh, but it would be a similar process as removing the coolant lines for um, the steering pump, the power steering fluid. To the extent that you've done that in the engine bay. Another thing here is there will be some fuel that's going to be running, you know, from the engine as you just start disconnecting this end. And this end, there's going to be fuel that's going to be dripping down, so have a container ready underneath, and maybe put a mask on and um, some safety goggles so it doesn't splash you in the face. Okay, so I loosened up this nut. This is a 19 millimeter. As you can see, there's some fuel starting to drip out. I'm draining the fuel here. It's quite a bit of fuel draining, as you can tell. 
so just be prepared for that. On the new filter, you can see I placed the crush ring here, so I'm just going to thread it in to the regulator. And on the other side, I'm going to take this plastic covering off. I'll slide this end until it snaps in. You should hear it snap in. There we go. So this end is now on. I'm going to put the bracket on here. It's a little tricky. I didn't take a picture of what it looks like behind there, but there are some tabs that this end hooks into behind the filter. And then is this end you saw there's a 10 millimeter nut. And then tightening this, um, can't really get a torque wrench on there. I'm going to say tight, but not super, super tight, but tight enough so that there's no leak. So I got the sand tightened up. I got this bracket tightened up before I put any of the other heat shielding on. Um, the covers, the plastic trays. I'm going to start the car and just make sure that there are no leaks from either this end or, or this end here. The car will probably take a couple cranks and crank it. So it's pumping fuel. Give it another shot. There it goes. Go under, see if there are any leaks. I think everything looks good. So before I start putting the paneling on, since I have it off, I might as well do a little bit of an inspection here. So the Guibo. The Guibo here, see if there are any leaks, drips, anything else that I see. Okay, so first panel to replace is going to be this metal one that covers the fuel filter. It has those two uh, studs that it has to go on. That's basically all that holds it on for now. And there are a couple other body screws that once you get the plastic panels on, it'll hold it up too. Next, we're going to line up the panel that goes below the transmission. So there are a couple of tabs that kind of have to go in. There's this guy that slides in to uh, this corner here. And then it should just sit appropriately. So what you try to do as you try to actually line up the holes that you can see right there. So it's, it's rock silver like this. And then it probably has to slide a little bit more forward, but you get the picture. Okay, next to you slide in these three tabs here that made this other panel kind of pivot. It's usually easier when it's hanging down like this. Make sure all three of those tabs are in. And then you can bring it up and kind of close it up like this. And then there are a couple of screws that are holding it on. 